fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV Show. I'm your host, Gary Leland. If you found our show on Facebook or your Roku box or any other video sharing device, please check out my website at www.fastpitch.tv. It's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and the place to find all of my softball video channels and softball blogs too. Now at this time we have seven video channels and eight blogs on the website so there's a lot happening there and all these blogs and videos channels are dedicated to one thing and that's Fast Pitch Softball. Now earlier this year I was at Softball Con held in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I've been to the first Softball Con held in 2011 but i got to tell you, it's grown a whole bunch since 2011. It was a great convention, and you really need to check it out. And check out their website at softballcon.net. Now, while I was at Softball Con, I filmed my friend Bill Hillhouse as he gave a great pitching clinic. Now, I'll bring you part one of his clinic right after this word from my sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-stale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know or have ever heard of me, my name is Bill Hillhouse. I live in Erie, Pennsylvania. I am 39 years old and I have never played a game of baseball in my life. I have only ever played fast pitch softball. Now that's pretty unbelievable for an American born kid. But, let me add to it. I started pitching when I was 12 years old. And this is before the era when boys would sue to play in girls sports and girls would sue to play in boys sports. And so if I wanted to pitch, I had to pitch in the men's leagues. A lot of people didn't know that there is actually men's fast pitch softball, but there is, and there's a pretty high level of it in some places. Uh, I pitched in the men's league when I was 12 years old for the first time. Now, fathom that for just a minute. Imagine you've got a 12-year-old daughter, or you're a coach of a 12-year-old ASA team, and your girl wants to pitch. So what are you going to do? You're going to put her in a women's softball league and make her play against college players, NPF players, Jessica Mendoza's, people of that caliber. That's how I had to learn how to pitch. And it was chuck and duck. Throw it and duck on a lot. I mean, that's how I like to learn. And I never played baseball in my life. That's all I ever wanted to do was pitch softball, and so that's all I ever did. So, a little bit about myself and my background is my team is based in New York City. I live in Erie, Pennsylvania. Travel softball for men's softball is a little bit different for women than it is for girls. I live in Erie, I board a plane every Friday, fly to wherever my team is playing. Our catcher might live in Florida, our shortstop lives in Tennessee, our second baseman lives in New Zealand, another guy lives in Canada. Everybody just meets in that location and that's how we all kind of get together and play. We don't play league games anymore, we don't play, uh, we don't even really play any home games. Our games are just all tournaments at, at the world and national level. And uh, YouTube at some time, you guys will be amazed at what you see with, with men's fast pitch softball. It's, it's a pretty remarkable thing. Um, I played on the US national team. A lot of people don't know that there's a men's team for the national team, and there is, just like there is for the women's team, except the men's softball was never in the Olympics. It's only ever been in the World Championships, the ISF World Championships, and of course in the Pan Am Games. So I've been a member of the US team for that too, back when I was a little bit younger and healthier. Um, and uh, so my experience is, is pretty far-reaching. Um, I really emphasize that with girls that I work with because I want them to understand that everything they're going through as a pitcher, I've been through it myself. I've tried every grip of the ball, I've tried every pitching motion, I've tried every pitching style, I've tried every pitching delivery, I've tried everything you can imagine because this is all I ever did. And so what I do now and what I teach now is entirely based off what I've learned through my life of pitching. I don't teach anything that I don't actually do myself. And there's a lot of pitching coaches who don't make that claim, or can't make that claim. A lot of famous pitchers 
who go around and do clinics and instruction, they teach things that they don't actually do themselves when they pitch. And they may not realize that they're doing it, but they do. And I'm gonna kind of talk about some of those things. One of the things that I really do that I get notarized for a lot is that I simplify pitching. And the way I do that is by looking at the audience. There's a lot of guys in this audience. And has anybody in this crowd of men ever played fast pitch before? One, two. Two guys. Were you pitchers? No. One was, one wasn't. Okay. So, people here in the crowd, folks, if you have a basic understanding of how our bodies work when you watch a baseball pitcher throw, you have a basic understanding of how our bodies work when we throw a softball. It's basically the overhand throwing motion turned upside down. And we're going to apply a lot of similarities and a lot of common sense to how we warm up and how we pitch and how our bodies are designed to move. Okay? So, what I teach. Where a lot of pitching coaches go wrong is they teach their own personal pitching style as though it's an absolute. You must pitch this way. And that's not right. It's absolutely not right. There are certain points in our motion when we have to be in the same positions. Everybody has to be in the same positions. If you put me side by side with Kat Osterman or preferably Jenny Finch, <laughs> you would see that in, in certain points in our pitching motion, we get ourselves into identical positions. A lot of pitcher coach, a lot, excuse me, a lot of pitching coaches, female pitching coaches, a lot of female pitching coaches tell a lot of people and, and, and there's a, there, I shouldn't even say that. Let me, let me back up and say it this way. There's a very big misconception out there that men and women need to pitch differently or do pitch differently. And I'm here to kind of expel that rumor and that myth. There shouldn't be any difference. Our bodies are designed pretty much to work the same way when we move. So we've got to understand how those things are designed to move and, and to utilize it. And we teach girls to throw overhand the exact same way as boys. They're being taught to swing bats now the exact same way as boys. They're running bases the exact same way as boys. Why, when it comes to softball pitching, should it be any different? And what a lot of people say, oh, well, men are stronger, they can do things. They can do things because they're so much stronger than girls. This, this is not about muscle. If this was about muscle, I would not look like this. This is about understanding our bodies and how they're designed to move. And it all begins with how we warm up. We've got to understand that what we do when we warm up affects what we do when we pitch. Okay? But again, I'm going to talk about this choices versus the must. Things that we have to do versus things that we choose to do. And a good example of that, Kat Osterman, when she goes to pitch, she does something like this. She goes up over her head, she comes down, and she pitches. Personally, I see absolutely no point in bringing the ball up over my head when I gotta come back down and go all the way back up again. A lot of wasted motion there. I simply start right here, I get myself started, wind up. I got myself into the exact same position she did, but we had a different style in which we did it. One is not right, one is not wrong, it's a choice. But the absolute is that we got ourselves into the same position. So those are things that are non-negotiable because our bodies are designed to work. We need to get our upper half of our body loading our lower body. We want to try to use the rubber like a starter block for a sprinter. So when a sprinter gets themselves ready, they load up, they get themselves set, and they push off. We had a different way in which we did it. So one isn't right and one isn't wrong, but it's, it would be wrong for me to say you have to pitch this particular way or with this particular motion. There's certain things that can harm their pitching motion, and that's one of the things that I make sure that I go over with all pitchers and parents and coaches, is I want to make sure that their own personal style of pitching does not affect the absolutes that they need when they pitch. If it is, then we got a problem. And I'm going to talk about some of those in just a second. If you take a look, there's me and me, and there's Kat in the game. And this picture right here is going to illustrate how you'll see that we get ourselves into identical positions in midair. Probably the key point in the motion is midway through. And we're in absolutely identical positions. Obviously, she's left-handed. Mechanics comparison, the common sense approach. 
We've got to understand that if we're not using our body the way it's designed to move, we're not going to get the most from it. One of the biggest examples of that, again, going into warm-ups, is how many times have we all seen pitchers who warm up doing wrist flips? It's a common practice in most places. Everybody thinks, oh, you've got to warm up doing wrist flips. And you see them doing it this way, and you see them doing it this way. Think about this for just one second. If that makes sense to you, why don't you ever see a baseball pitcher warm up going? <laughs> Everybody laughs at that, but that's the same exact thing. When somebody's teaching themselves wrist flips, what they're teaching themselves is to pitch with a straight arm, locking their elbow <coughs> and to use their wrist only. That would be like teaching somebody to throw overhand, like this. When somebody throws a ball overhand, their elbow needs to bend and snap. Underhand, my elbow needs to bend and snap. Go see key points in the positions, myself and Danielle Laurie. Pretty close to similar positions. Her glove goes up a little bit higher than mine. Side view, you can see how my elbow is cocked and ready to snap. Jenny Finch's elbow is getting ready to cock on the way down. She has a straighter arm than I do in her arm circle. Choice, I don't lock my elbow at any point. My elbow stays loose so that I can get a whipping motion just like throwing overhand. Elbows loose so that I get a whipping motion. Have you heard about the great softball coaches clinic that Fast Pitch TV is hosting? They have a great lineup of speakers, including softball pitching great Kat Osterman. See all the speakers at www.fastpitch.tv slash clinic. I'm sure this clinic's going to sell out quick, so get your ticket today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed part one of Bill's clinic. He's a great pitching coach. Come back next week and watch part two of his pitching clinic. But now it's time for the Win Some Softball Stuff competition. And all you softball fans better listen. Since you're listening to the show, you should comment on this video. The Win Some Softball Stuff competition. And this week, I'm announcing the winner of the 2012 Louisville Slugger Zeno Fast Pitch Bat. Let me tell you, this is probably the hottest selling bat we've had in, in the last couple years. I want to thank Louisville Slugger for participating in the Win Some Softball Stuff contest. So please visit their website at www.slugger.com. Now it's time to announce the winner. And drumroll please, the winner is... Tanya Martin. Tanya, you have 60 days to get me your address and tell me what size bat you want. And we'll get them out to you. Louisville Slugger will mail it straight to you. So thanks again, Louisville Slugger, for donating the bat and sponsoring the show. Next week, I'll start a new contest, so check next week's show for that. Now, if you have an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android phone, you need to get the Fast Pitch TV show app today. Just go to your phone's app store, search softball, and you'll find it, I promise you. Don't forget to check out our new skills video channel at coacheslook.com. It's part of the Fast Pitch TV network. It's a great opportunity for high school players to get their skills videos up and seen by college coaches. It's something we're building, and it's free right now to uh, high school players to put their videos on there, okay? So that's it for today. So until next week, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye. TV Network.